Hey, how you doing? Hello. <laughs> and me and the wife are back again. Uh, God bless you, precious family, and everyone listening. Um, of course, as our custom is, Leah normally starts <laughs> and finishes. We're not getting religious, <laughs> are we? <laughs> no, that's how it happens in the house sometimes. <laughs> sometimes it's me that starts and and she finishes and then I start again and we have to go and repent and say, look, we're sorry. You know, if you've been married any more than one day, you know what it's like to, <laughs> in this world. Uh, you, you know, not everyone's got it together down here. We certainly haven't and um, we're working on it. But hey, the longer you go at this thing and walking with God and walking with each other, loving each other, you know, we're a work in progress. Uh, we're what you'd call uh, God's, you know, rough cut diamonds. <laughs> in the rough, diamonds in the rough. And so aren't we all, but God uh, brings something beautiful uh, out of nothing. Thank you, Lord. So you, what do you got to say for yourself today? What do I got to say for <laughs> myself? Well, this is uh, kind of different this morning. Uh, we've seen a lot of you actually this morning because we've gone back to having our normal services and, uh, and then we've come home to do this. And so, for those of you that we have seen, it was great to see you this morning. And for those of you that we haven't, hello, here we are. <laughs> so, um, this morning in our prayer time, I was just thinking about this week, and you know, you've only had to turn on your TV for five minutes to see what's been going on in the United States and what is filtering around different nations of the world, and. Um, I was just thinking about that, you know, 2020 has been a year full of surprises so far. A lot of things happening that we could never have predicted. Anyway, I was thinking about what is happening in our world and the current situation. And uh, I was sharing this morning that, you know, sometimes you just got to go and turn that TV off because, you know, all of that bad, sad news can make you feel a little bit depressed, a little bit down. And uh, so I had to do that myself this week. And as I was thinking about that in our prayer time, a scripture came to mind out at church this morning. And uh, you can find it in Isaiah 60, verse 2. And it says, For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people but the Lord will arise over you and his glory will be seen upon you. So darkness shall cover the earth, deep darkness the people. But who? The Lord will rise upon you and his glory will be seen upon you. And I had a look at that in a different translation. I think it was the Amplified Classic. And it says, for behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and dense darkness all peoples. But the Lord shall rise upon you, O Jerusalem, and his glory shall be seen upon you. We are seeing, I don't know how dark God would consider what we're starting to see happen on the earth, but there certainly is darkness out there covering the earth, and dense darkness falling on people but for us we have a hope that the Lord's glory will rise upon us and be seen upon us so suppose my little nugget for today is you know don't sit there meditating and getting down with everything that's happening no let's look up let's tune into God let's hear what he's having to say and let's let his glory shine upon us. And with that, I just want to um, partner with that scripture out of Isaiah 61. In verse 3, it says that we are to put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And so as this week was unfolding and that was happening to me a little bit, I started singing. I started singing praises to God. It's a nice and thing. it did. It lifted off that heaviness that was trying to come around me. Yeah. So those are two nuggets. You get two for the price of one this week. <laughs> Let the yeah, glory nice. uh, come upon you and put on the garment of praise instead of that spirit of heaviness. 
God bless. Yeah, thank you, darling. And, you know, as the darkness does come, um, the light, the glory comes up on. Where does it come from? Right in there, up on. Mm. You know, God is God, he can do anything. But uh, he's made choices of his own according to his own counsel and will. And with his wisdom, he executes his word. And he does it through people. You know, we may think um, because of some uh, theology that we may have heard before that, oh, God can just do anything. And he can, but he's, he's built himself frameworks. Mm. And he's chosen to do things on the earth through his people, through his children. And he's come to live inside uh, his children. And the kingdom of God is on the earth, there's somewhere it's within. Yes, there is a heaven. Yes, there is a place way on the edge of our universe, you know. But there is a father living on the inside. When we got Jesus, when we got the Holy Spirit, you know, when Jesus breathed into us, uh, we got Jesus and we got the Father, you know, and where the Lord is, the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Mm. You know, the Lord is the Spirit, the Scriptures mm. say. You know, the Holy Spirit is the Lord. He is the Master. He's also called Father. You can't separate the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Amen. You know, you get the whole package with God. And if God's doing something on the earth, I guarantee you, someone somewhere has prayed. The Spirit of God has poured out of someone. Yes, there is a pouring upon, but where did it come from? God, yes. But where? From the rich treasury of glory from the inside, you know, where God is living. He chose to live in us. We didn't choose. We said yes to Jesus without really knowing uh, what we're doing in most cases. I didn't know. As I've been sharing last week, you know, I wasn't looking for God. I was not interested in Him. He came looking for me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And my wife. He comes looking for us all, you know. But he didn't just choose one day, I'm going to go and start looking for David. He decided that, you know, before this earth was even founded, before a foundation was put in place, he knew us. Mm. And just think of the love of God. And that's not just, that's just not me and her. We're just two representatives of, of a great God who loves people, you know. And uh, he knew us all. And... This world is so full of selfishness and so full of people absorbed in themselves. I've lived a life like that. We all have to some extent. And I don't think, you know, I've lived a better than anybody. We don't realize how great God is, how big He is. He loves everyone the same. You know, He didn't just think of me before the foundation of the earth. He thought of you. You know, if you're listening to this uh, message, you know, 10, 20, 30 years down the track of YouTube, don't take it off. Uh, God's talking to you. You know, he thought of you. He knew you. And I started uh, praying and started seeing some things in the scripture years ago. So I started to look at it through all different translations. And I'll, I'll get my Bible here, uh, which is on my iPad. I can't get my Bible on my phone because it's over there. <laughs> I'm recording this modern technology. But with this um, scripture in Jeremiah 33, 3, you know, I just really, really fell in love with it. So, you know, I started to, I read it through different translations and started to speak it and meditate on it. It says, call to me and I'll answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you look in different translations. Uh, Ask me, I'll tell you remarkable secrets you do not know about things to come. That was the New King James, then the New Living. Uh, the NIV, call to me, I'll answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. These are secrets, these are mysteries. They're known to somebody, somewhere, but I believe there's many things that no one knows yet, only the Father. You know, the physical coming and manifestation of the Son. You know, touchdown, <laughs> planet touchdown. He's here with us, but there's a, there's a the physical flesh, Jesus, is gonna to touch down. That's in the heart of the Father. How great is God, you know? Here's another translation. Amplify, call to me. I'll answer you. I'll show you great and mighty things, fenced in and hidden, which you do not know, do not distinguish and recognize or have knowledge of and understand. The Bible says the secret things belong to the Lord, but what is revealed belongs to us and to our children forever. You know, once we know about it, then we can share. We can share that mystery. Many mysteries are being hidden and revealed and made known to his holy apostles and prophets. And um, it's just marvellous what God is doing. He's got so much in store for us. 
And the reason I'm a bit, um, you know, a bit choked up, a bit tear is not because I'm sad. I'm just, um, the tears, for a believer, it's tears of happiness and joy. And it's the love of God. It's God's love. You know, when I first um, encountered Jesus, I heard the message. And the preacher wrote on the whiteboard. And I didn't know we we're going to hear a preacher. She mm. didn't know we we're going to hear a preacher. Mm. There he was. And God was able to give me a little download of my life. And I could see my desperate need of Jesus and of the separation between myself and God, but that Jesus is the bridge, you know, his arm, his hand was outstretched uh, to me, to the sinner. And his other hand was outstretched to the Holy Father. And because he was God in the flesh, he could join us up together. And when I came to him and when my wife came to him at the same moment, you know, we joined our hands and um, we pray, but God already did the work. You know, the tears are already flowing. And I just remember that day. We were just, you know, so happy. <laughs> we just cried and giggled and laughed, you know. And when all, the, when all the tears went away, then the peace, yeah. just peace was left. Yeah. There was nothing else left but peace. And... Uh, if you've never encountered Jesus, you may think, well, you know, what, what is this peace? Well, it's peace which surpasses uh, all understanding, all human reason. You can't reason, you can't describe it in a textbook. You can't write a novel about it, but you can experience it. And when peace himself comes in, and overturns all that was wrong and gives you a new heart, and the fears dissipate in the darkness that you don't even realize you have or just have hidden away. When that goes uh, and peace is remaining, <laughs> you're just so happy, you know. And of course, that was um, the first step. Yeah. And God wants us to stay at that first step. You know, that's a mighty, mighty, mighty miracle. Miracle of miracles, the new birth. God does not want us to ever lose that innocence. But... What happens? We go out and we, you know, we get a few hard knocks, a few giggles, a few cheers, a few jeers. You know, that's life down here. We may hear some folks teaching us about the kingdom with a little bit of error or we get a lot of a man's reasonings and thoughts about things. And before you know it, uh, it's possible we can return to bondage or get a wrong view of God, that he's my problem, that he's you know, beating up on me and he's the one causing the troubles. Many give their heart to Jesus and afterwards all hell breaks loose around them and they think, blow this Christianity, this is ridiculous, my life was easy before I tried this, I'm out of here. It's because all of a sudden you now are a threat to the darkness, to the kingdom. And every step of progression since that day, if you come into his presence more and more and more and recognize that glory on the inside and start drawing closer to God and develop this relationship, there's going to be resistance. Not just by our flesh, because our flesh is not born again. Our flesh can be transformed as well. That, that is happening. That will even happen in these last days. You know, there's a transformation taking uh, place. It's just a, a beautiful, glorious gospel. But uh, with every step forward, there's resistance. You know, I've heard one person say, um, new level, new devil. I don't know if that's right, but it certainly feels like it, doesn't it? You know, you go forward a little bit and, uh, and then you can knock back a step. But hey, it may be two steps forward, one step back. Three steps forward, one step back. But um, you're still moving forward. You know, that's what we've got to do. We just, you've just got to have some tenacity. And it's not mental um, ability. It's all the heart. You know, the Old Testament was God working on the outside. You know, the New Testament is God on the inside. He wants us to, to draw close, to recognize his indwelling presence, to let that come up and bring light uh, to our mind. We need our souls renewed. We need our will. We need it uh, broken, like a horse that's broken in, you know, to yield to its master. We have a new master, but he's not going to force himself on us. Um, it's something we have to learn and have to yield to him. But once we're fully committed, then he can lead us, he can guide us. As I heard my friend Brandon just say, Brandon Bartra. I'm mentioning his name again for a reason. You know, he's one of those names we're probably all going to hear in the future. But in the early days, when God does something new and something new starts to happen, um, the forerunners, 
always get misunderstood and, and cop a bit of flat, then that's fine. You and I may be forerunners. You know, all of us are coming into something new. God is doing something new. And if you're going to run with God, it may just be a little different from how it was. Yeah, have you recognized that? If there's something new, you think everyone would be excited. But if you see something, it doesn't necessarily mean that others see it. Call to me, I'll show you things to come. Hidden, fenced in, secrets. So if a secret has been made known and revealed to you, it doesn't necessarily mean everyone understands it. So have you noticed that if you uh, get something really you're excited about and share it with a close friend, they may um, be happy and rejoice with you. They may get it, the light bulb may come on, but it quite often doesn't. Some uh, traditional way of thinking or what have you, or disrespect you know, that you could hear from God, whatever the reason, or just some sort of religious uh, mindset, they'll uh, maybe giggle or laugh or come against it and try to discourage it. Now, it's not so much the person always, it's, it's what's in them, it's the darkness. We're all having to come to new levels right now. God wants to bring the church through to a new place. So there's new ground to break. Some of the changes is getting back to where we should be. You know, so much uh, has been lost. Even the great apostle Paul, all the good that he did, all the churches, thousands, tens of thousands, what an awesome, awesome ministry. He felt so discouraged uh, towards the end of his ministry that his people, you know, had returned a, a bondage and becoming corrupt. But, you know, he's bearing fruit <laughs> to this day and we're all part of it. You know, look what God did, he used him to write so much of the New Testament and spirit breathed through uh, uh, Paul, the apostle Paul, who was once Saul, you know, murderer of God's people. Now God is great. God is awesome. And uh, I'm just ducking around everywhere. You're going from here to there. But, you know, from this scripture here, uh, God starts to reveal things to us. He started to reveal things to me step by step by step. And as uh, he's been preparing uh, me, I've been preparing myself also. We have to humble ourselves and return to childlikeness and uh, keep an open mind and an open heart because God is going to do some new things uh, in the days to come. Don't you agree, Leah? Mm -hmm. You know, my... Uh, my audience over there, <laughs> my congregation. <laughs> but no, you know, it's an electronic world and we have the great internet now. So, of course, the congregation will be quite big. You know, God bless whoever gets to watch this. And, you know, we may not have met or may never met, meet on the earth as such right now, but uh, we can be friends online. So, Leah, you got anything else that you want to share? Mm. Yeah, I may come back and share some more things shortly, but... My wife and I, we're a bit of a team here. A bit of a tag team, aren't we? We're opposites, but we uh, always <laughs> meld together. Yeah. God, God does it. I've been thinking about how you're talking about being God inside minded. And uh, for those of us that um, have been around for a while and are believers, we know what that means to be God inside minded. But I was just thinking about somebody who maybe is tuning into this who doesn't know what God inside minded is and how can you get God inside minded and uh, the scripture out of Romans 10 uh, verse 9 came to me this is how you get God inside minded that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead you will be saved from with uh, for with the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation for whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved so you've got to do that first yeah. to have that God inside mindedness coming out mm -hmm. this is the first step make the connection so if you yeah that is the connection. So if you've never done that, then I strongly encourage you to, to do it. To confess with your mouth that you believe that um, the Lord Jesus Christ came. He died on the cross for my sin, your sin, all of mankind's sin. All we've got to do is repent of that sin. And God will forgive us because of what Jesus did on the cross. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, but with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. <laughs> Amazing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this is what God wants to do. He's put a plan in place. 
so that he can act his will, his covenant on the earth. And he chose to do it through people. You know, his first men failed, but God did not fail. God's not a failure. And um, we fail, but he can take failures and make us into champions. God don't create no rubbish, no junk. Though we may have uh, failed God and even failed each other, uh, God has not failed us. He's not failed you, he has not failed me. Many are put out with God because God didn't come through for the way they thought he should. And, you know, and God's bigger than us. He's not sitting on there so upset that we're upset at him. He understands. He sees the weapons that come. He understands why we are the way we are. He's the all-knowing, all-wise creator. So he has an answer. He has a remedy for everything. And it's always through the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. And Jesus himself uh, shocked and actually offended so many. But it was with truth. You know, he, he wasn't out there lying or trying to take from people. He was always giving. You know, he's the most giving, loving person ever. You know, he's the God man, don't forget. He's without sin. But at one stage, uh, he nearly lost everybody, his whole congregation, when he said, you know, if you want this eternal life, it's found in my son. You're going to have to drink my, uh, in my uh, flesh, sorry, and my blood. You're going to have to drink and eat. And they could not understand those spiritual things. Um, but there's so many mysteries that have to be revealed, you know. And you just have to uh, humble yourself like a child and come back to recognize that, hey, look, I don't know everything. In fact, the little bit I know is just a small portion, just a small little slither of the pie. There's so much more. Most of what is to be known is not known by us at this time. So therefore, we have a lifetime of learning. In fact, it's an eternity of learning. And it's not a learning of the mind so much to puff up in knowledge. Look how much I know. I'm Professor Dudat. No, it's, it's an expanding heart. We are able to contain the Creator. If you can contain the Creator, if He's made us like that, we can contain the universe and anything else that's ever created. Why? Because we have Him. If you've got Him, you've got everything else. Amen. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the sweet pea's finished. <laughs> she is my sweet pea. Am I? Yeah, yeah. yeah you're released. You can go over there. I think I'm just about finished again. We shuffle back and forward, you know, and uh, maybe maybe we need to get some sort of little um, studio one day because, look, as many know out there, it is a way of the future. It's a way to reach people in their own home, you know, in their own place of comfort, in their car. You know, I listen to YouTubes in the car. I just put it on and just let them play away and I just drive along. Look, you just could not do that years back. What we can do now is at our fingertips so easily. Uh, use it to your advantage. You know, make friends online and um, you know, serve God, serve his people, uh, love who he puts in 